<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreitz, and welcome to Halloween How To. Have you ever wondered what happened to the poisoned apple after Snow White took a bite from it? Well, maybe, just maybe, her seven little friends safely locked it away, ensuring that no one else would ever suffer her same fate. In this edition, I'm going to show you how you can use fiber optics to enhance this and other Halloween props and displays. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you. So let's get started. Let's first take a quick look at exactly what it is we are going to be creating. We are going to take a light source and we're going to take a bundle of fiber optic fibers. In between those two, we're going to put a rotating disc that will manipulate the light. That manipulated light will then be emitted at the opposite end of those optical fibers. Here are some of the key items that you're going to need to create the apparatus. You need a geared electric motor, and for this particular motor, I've listed the information on purchasing it online in the description below. This electric motor rotates at 5 RPMs, and that's revolutions per minute. You will also need a small piece of wood for the base, some vinyl tubing, a piece of wooden dowel, and it should have the same diameter as the rotating shaft on the electric motor. You will need the lid to a round cardboard box, and these are available at craft and hobby stores, and you need a diameter of that lid to be between six and eight inches. Some coat hanger wire, some old fashioned toothpicks, the flat type, a compact flashlight. Now you need one that has at least 100 lumens, that's the brightness of the bulb, and that lasts about four hours. And you also want it as short as possible and as small in diameter as possible. And of course you need some fiber optic filament, which looks a lot like a very thick fishing line. In fact, this fiber optic material is about the thickness of a sewing needle, and I used about 40 feet of it. Now the interesting thing about fiber optics is that no matter how long the piece is or how many loops or turns you have in it, when you shine the light on one end, it will emit equally on the other end. Well, let's start assembling the apparatus. Now, I happen to find this round cardboard box with its lid at a thrift store, and as you can see, it's approximately eight inches in diameter. I then cut a piece of wood for the base that was the same length. So the piece of wood that I have is eight inches by five and a half inches by five eighths inches thick. Give yourself a center mark on the length of that piece of wood and go ahead and line up the rotating shaft of the motor with that center mark and the back of the motor with the back of the piece of wood. Use those wood screws as set screws and attach that motor to your wood base. To attach the wooden dowel to the rotating shaft of the motor, we're going to use the vinyl tubing to create a compression fitting. You can buy vinyl tubing at a hardware store, and when you do, you want to look at both the OD, which is the outside dimension, and the ID, which is the inside dimension. You want the ID, the inside dimension, to be the same or slightly smaller than the rotating shaft on the motor, which is also the same size as the wood dowel that you were using. Using a small piece of that vinyl tubing, slip about one inch of the wooden dowel into the tubing and leave enough of the tubing so it can slip over the rotating shaft of the motor. The fit should be snug. Next, we want to create a disc that is two to three inches in diameter, and in the center we want to drill a hole that is the same diameter, if not slightly smaller, than the wood dowel. Now you can make this disc out of plastic, heavy cardboard, or even this cutting board material. 
Place a couple pieces of double stick foam tape on the top portion of the disc and slide it over the wooden dowel. Position the disc on the dowel until it is slightly higher than the upright flashlight. Then cut off the excess dowel. Make sure that the disc and the dowel are perpendicular to each other. Place some glue where the disc and the dowel meet. Set aside and let dry. Next, find center on the cardboard lid and drill a hole the same diameter as the dowel. Take your flashlight and place it on top of the cardboard lid, holding it about one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Make a mark where the center of the flashlight is, and then make an additional mark to the right and the left, both one quarter inch away from that center mark. Extend those lines around the lid of the box and make sure that you remain consistent with the measurement from the edge of the lid. When you are done, it should look like this. Additionally, make a mark at 12 and 4 and then using a utility knife, cut this area away. To reinforce the lid because of what was cut away, use two pieces of the clothes hanger wire bent at a 90 degree and glued on the lid and the side of the lid with a glue gun. Now that we have reestablished the structural integrity of the lid, we can add the final touches to it. By adding some clear colored plastic to the cutout area of the lid of the box, you can change the color of the fiber optics. I happen to find these at an office supply store and you can simply cut them to fit and glue in place. Now the twinkling effect is achieved by gluing the flat toothpicks onto the surface of the lid. You can vary the distance that they are from each other, but always make sure that they point towards center. Now here is the finished lid. It might not look very pretty, but the effect that it creates certainly is. To hold the flashlight upright and in position, you can use a small piece cut from the end of this pipe insulation. Glue it to your wood base and then you can simply place your flashlight into it and it will hold it where it needs to be. With the lid in place, you can see how the light is being manipulated and how important it is for the optical fibers to be directly over that light source. So let's take a moment to talk about a container to house this apparatus. Find a container that will allow the round cardboard lid that you use to be able to rotate freely. And because it's probably going to be set to one side, you are going to look for something that is almost twice the size from side to side as it is from front to back. Also make sure that it will be able to accommodate the overall height of the wood base, plus the flashlight, plus the rotating cardboard lid. Once you have positioned your apparatus in your container, you will want to drill a hole or holes directly over the light source. This is where the bundled optical fibers for the apple goes, while the smaller bundle of optical fibers for the base goes into a hole adjacent to the other hole. A piece of clear strapping tape over the hole on the inside of the container lid will prevent the bundle ends from touching the rotating cardboard lid. I cut a hole in the back of the container in order to have access to the electrical cord, the motor, and the flashlight while the lid of the container is closed. If you're using the fiber optics to maybe enhance a different prop, possibly a magic potion bottle or maybe a magic spell book, and the surface is either wood or plastic or cardboard, you could actually drill the holes for the fiber optic fibers with a very small drill bit. Then enlarge the end of the optical fiber by holding it up against the hot tip of a glue gun. If the prop that you want to enhance with the fiber optics is of a softer material, such as this imitation apple, which is actually made out of foam, you can start the initial hole with the safety pin and then carefully feed the optical fiber through that hole. If you're looking to duplicate the same look as this poison apple prop, the hand that I used is actually a ring display hand made out of hollow plastic and it was purchased at a hobby store. I marked where the natural joints are, 
cut those and then used wire and tubing to rejoin those fingers together. What that allowed me to do is to reposition the fingers to accommodate the apple. And the glass dome? Well, that is simply a $4 thrift store find. This is why I love Halloween. You can turn down the lights, turn up the special effects, and create magic. I hope that you will consider becoming a subscriber to our YouTube channel and that way we can keep you up to date not only with the release of the new Halloween how-to videos but also for the final episodes of our spooky little web series Gardner and Wells. Thanks for watching and as always happy Halloween.